Hello everybody and welcome back. In this video solution, we are going to dive into the problem next greater element 1. Now the brute force solution for this problem is accepted and is going to give you a time complexity of m times n times n. Now this is going to give you a runtime of 518 milliseconds in Python 3, but there is a better solution that exists. One solution which is going to give you a time complexity of order of m plus n. That is correct, it's not multiplication anymore, but just addition. And this is going to reduce our runtime almost by fivefold. Now, if you're interested in the brute force solution, I've presented it on my website, as you can see here. But in this video solution, we are only going to talk about the optimization of how to bring this runtime down to m plus n time. Okay, let's get started. First, let us look at input output format you're given two pieces of information, nums1 and nums2. Both of these are integer element arrays. The goal of this problem is to return the answer. And each element of the answer, answer of i, represents the next greatest element of nums1 of i present in nums of 2. The setup can be a bit tricky to understand, so let's actually think about that. What it is saying is that go ahead and iterate over all the elements in the nums1. And the goal here is to, for each element of nums1, try to find the next greatest element inside of this list over here. I think it's better understood just by a couple of simple examples, so we'll build on, uh, slowly go up to that. But first, I want to bring your attention to one very interesting detail. Is that nums1 is a subset of nums2. We can write it as such. And what it means is, instead of getting complicated with nums of 1 over here, we can directly say that, you know what, let's not even look at nums 1, let's only focus on nums 2. And if I can find the answer for all of the elements in nums 2, I have automatically found all of the answers for the elements in nums 1. Why? Because nums 1 is a subset of nums 2. So let's only focus on nums 2 and we'll get started with a couple of observations. As I suggest, whenever in doubt, whenever you don't understand the question or when you want to start to build up to a solution, it is always a good idea to look at a couple of very simple basic cases and then try to see what patterns emerge. As I said before, we are going to look at and focus on nums2 only. And we're going to look at a couple of examples of num2 to see what happens. Okay, now let's go ahead and ask the question for 1. What is the next greatest element for 1? Since there are no more elements in the list, we can just return minus 1 as the answer for this. Okay, what about 1, 3? In this case, the answer for 1 is going to be 3 since 3 is the next greatest element for 1. Similarly, what is the answer for 3? There are no more elements, so the answer for this is going to be minus 1. Okay, what about this 3, 1 case? In this case, the answer for 3 is, well, 1 is not greater than 3 and there are no more elements remaining, so the answer is minus 1. Similarly, what is the answer for this one? Well, there are no more elements over here, so the answer is minus 1. So it looks like the last element is always getting this minus 1 at the end. Okay, maybe that is an important question, maybe that's an important property. So we'll say last element always gets minus 1. But there's also something more that's happening. In the cases of 1, 3 and 3, 1, we see that the only order changed and they were providing very different results. So the ordering does matter. Okay, uh, let's try to look at a couple of more cases and uh, these are the ones which will truly bring out the flavors of this question. Let's look at the case of 2. What is the next greatest element for 2? Is it 1? No, it is not. Is it 3? Yes, it is. So we'll write 3 as the answer. Similarly, for 1, the answer is going to be 3. And for 3, the answer is going to be minus 1. In this way, do you notice how we assigned 2 and 1 the same answer as 3, this element over here? So this element came over and said that, you know what, you both are lesser than me, so I'm going to assign myself to you both as the answer. Okay, there's something interesting that's happening, which I'm going to come to very soon again. Uh, let's also quickly go over the case of 4, 2, 1, 3. 
Okay, so the answer for four is, uh, well, there are no more elements, so it's minus one. The answer for two is three again. The answer for one is three, and the answer for three is minus one. Okay, great. So let's go back to this particular case. What's happening is we are sort of able to uh, look at the elements two and one, and maybe sort of we are popping them out of the array. And we're saying that, you know what, since two and one are both lesser than three, we were able to pop them both out and assign the value of three as the answer for both of these. Let's actually write and uh, formalize this down. We are looking for a data structure and this is just a black box for now. We are looking for a data structure that can help us insert elements with these. So we don't want any restrictions on how the elements are inserted. But what we do want is this popping thing. And we want to say that, you know what, remove elements while there is a certain condition being hold. When I look at the element three, I want to be able to look at the previous element one and say that, you know what, one is lesser than three which means that one's answer is three. Similarly, we'll remove one out of the array and we'll, we are going to look at three and then two. So is three greater than two? Yes, it is, which means that the two's next greatest element is three. In other words, the answer for two is also three. And in this way, we can also remove two. We can remove both of these elements because we have got an answer for both of these elements. What we are essentially doing is we are using our data structure called the stack. And if you are still not clear, let's do one final dry run to see how actually things work under the hood. Okay, we, are ha we have the stack data structure and now we want to start off with the element four. So let's go ahead and insert this element four into the data structure. Recall that we don't really want any conditions or restrictions on how we're inserting these elements. We're just inserting them for our own sake. Okay, in four is inserted, that's good. What about two? Okay, uh, we can also insert two. And two is not an answer for four. So it does not kick out four. Makes sense? Four's next greatest element is not two. So two can remain on top of it. Okay, then we have the element one. Again, one is not an answer for two. One is not an answer for four. So we'll just keep one on the top of the stack. Now we'll finally come to the element three. Now three comes up and it says, you know what? I want to join the party. I want to join the stack, but three is greater than one. Three is greater than one. What does that mean? One's next greatest element is three. One's next greatest element is three. And so three go ahead and kicks out one out of this stack and assigns the answer three to the element one. So we have the keys as nodes. Sorry, we'll just call them elements. And uh, this is the current value we're looking at. So one gets kick out, kicked out of the stack because three is greater than one. So now three again says that, hey, you know what? One, get, one got kicked out, what about two? Is two greater than three? No, sorry, is uh, three greater than two? Is three the answer for two? Yes, it is. So we can kick this out again and we can assign two as the answer three. Finally, we have three, which wants to join the party and it finally can because three is no longer greater than four. Four's answer is not three. It can never be. So we'll just add three over here. Now, these are two of the answers that we already got and you can verify them over here. But what about three and four? Both of these are still remaining in the stack. Well, since there are no more elements that can pop both of them out, both of them do not, do not have a next greatest element. And in this way, we were able to say that, you know what, since both of these are the only elements in the stack, three gets the score of minus one, four gets minus one as well. So both of these jointly are able to get us the final answer. Let's go ahead and actually code this up. Okay, the first thing we want to go ahead and set up is the stack, which is going to be an empty array. Now we'll iterate over all the num in nums2. 
recall how we don't really care about nums1 at all until the very end. We only care about finding the answer for nums2. And this is what we have done again and again. We have found the observations for nums2. And we have done this stack kind of thing for nums2 again. So we'll say for each of the elements in nums2, uh, go ahead and add them to the stack. Uh, this is the same operation we saw over here, saying that we want to insert elements with ease. We want to be able to insert all of the elements into the data structure. Okay, when do we remove elements though? We remove elements while the stack top, which is stack of minus one, while the stack top is lesser than the current num. Basically, we found an answer for stack of minus one and the answer for stack of minus one is num, since num is the next greatest element for stack of minus one. What we can do is we can also create a dictionary and this is going to be a default, uh, default dict int and we're going to say default dict of this particular element stack of minus one. Mm -hmm. We can just pop this element. So the default dict is going to be num itself. And this is similar to what we have done over here. When we already had one in the stack over here and three came along, three sort of beat up the one and it says that, you know what? One gets kicked out of the stack. One's answer is three. Okay. Um, so this is pretty much it. Also, we want to do a check over here saying that uh, the length of stack should also be present. Otherwise, we cannot access the stack of minus one. If you look at it, this is a very standard sort of stack question. Okay, we also said that, you know what, while stack exists, once we're done with iterating over all the elements, so we went over each and every single element, and even then, two of the elements are left in the stack. What it means is that both of them do not have a next greatest element. And we are going to say that our dictionary of the current stack.paw is equals to minus one. So earlier we did num and now we are going to do minus one. Num was the answer for this stack top and minus one is the answer for the leftover guys. Finally, let's go ahead and return the answers. Now we want to return the answer for the dictionary of num for num in nums1. As I said, nums1 is just a subset of nums2. So since we have already found out all the answer for dictionary of uh, num as in nums2, we can just return that at the end. Let's go ahead and run sample test cases and we'll go ahead and submit this. And you can see that the runtime comes out to be 105 milliseconds, much better than the 518 milliseconds brute force solution. Anyways, this is it for the problem. Next, greater element one. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you want more of daily videos like these high quality content, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.